Hello and welcome to this time lapse. We've got some lemons on a little vintage saucer. I took the reference photo myself. I just set something up very informally in the studio. Basically got some black foam core, made a little box with three sides instead of four. And um, sorry, I'm lying. Actually, it was two sides and just ha and had a like a roof on it. Is that, is that really good English? I don't know. Three sides in total. So one side was open and that's where I had my lamp. So I could get that light shining directly on the little setup. So very, you know, impromptu, whack, whack together. Um, so working on pastel matte paper here. It's in the blue colorway, the dark blue. Uh, the measurements are 17 centimeters squared. And you're probably wondering, why on earth is she doing two lemons the exact same and that's a very good question um <laughs> i have explained in previous ones that um so these go to a gallery and i mistook um the owner of the gallery for saying i should do two at a time but what he meant was do two lemon paintings at a time not two exactly the same how daft of me anyway never mind day eh? Um, so basically it means you can crack out two paintings in a, a space of like an hour and a half, you know, because I've got all my pastels, um, all the colors out in one go, it makes sense. So anyway, so that's why I have got two paintings out at the moment. I don't do this anymore. No, I'll do two different ones. Anyway, so that's a bit thick of me, but never mind, eh? Never mind. So you can see I've got a very loose sketch in and I've finished um, with the background um, so you can see it's pretty dark and I do go in at the end and add a little bit more color to it but using quite a few pastel pencils um, just to kind of mark in my shapes and then I'll go back in with soft pastels. Now if you want pops of color the brand I'll always go to is Sennelier. Um, I used a lot of their yellows in the lemons. They've got the most beautiful colors. Just if you want pastels with high chroma, you know, like on the lemon, you know, Sennelier, you, you can't go wrong. So adding a little bit of shadow in there with my good old gray 13 from Unison, which I absolutely adore. And you can see the shape on the one lemon. The lemon on the left is looking really wonky. It's looking like a cone head. Um, I do go in and correct that as well. So this is sitting on a little vintage plate. I collect lots of little bits and bobs, I guess you could say. That's not the word I'm looking for, but I can't remember what the word is I'm looking for. Knickknacks. Is that is that right? Knickknacks. Um, and so I just collect teacups, vases, urns, jars, and I will often, you know, use those. And the intention is to use them in my still life painting. So this is just a little uh, white saucer with some gold um, edge that I have collected. So in the white sauce, I actually haven't used any white yet. Been building up using tans and very dull down grays with um, more purple in it than grays with blue in it. And you can see for the shadow, it looks really funny. Um, but of course, the process is layering, right? So I, from doing this... Um, for how long now? Three, three and a half years. I know that I'm going to get my painting to a place that I'm happy with. I trust the process, right? So I went in and I marked out the shadow and then you'll saw I came back in with the table because the shadow is obviously just a shadow and you've still got to put in whatever's underneath the shadow, you know, whatever um surface the shadow is being cast onto gosh my english is not very good today is it anyway um so that's why i went back in with um the browns that i used on the table but because i had that that bluey gray greeny color underneath it's 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 um translating as shadow you can see oh that's the shadow well, hopefully that's what it looks like. I think that's what it looks like. Um, 
so it's important to get the base color in there so that's why I went in with the green gray and then back over with the color that I used for the whole table I explained that really badly didn't I but hopefully you can you can see what I mean you can see what I'm doing so continuing now I'm kind of mapping out the little intricate pattern the gold pattern that you can see on the table also with the pastel pencil because then I'm not really committing to anything because you can easily get rid of pastel pencil marks you can also on pastel mat with pastel sticks but it's a little bit tricky and I, I you know if I'm unsure about something I, I prefer to work at first with the pastel pencil so you can see that I've got the shadows of the um, lemons on the white and I've used qu um, quite an orangey brown mixed in with like a mauve gray and a gray um, just because you're dealing with a white saucer and then a little bit of the color of the lemon is going to reflect onto that plate so it's not going to look you know just gray it's going to have a little bit of um, color so there we go, working in um, the yellows, a mixture of um, yellow orange and then going to brighter yellows. And like I said, mostly using Sennelier. And then sometimes I'll use my pastel pencil just to kind of move the pastel that I've laid down a little bit more into shape. I've also got, so also one of the main colors in this lemon, I should say, is yellow 10 by unison it's that beautiful vibrant yellow it really is lovely so for the little details like the pips um, just mapping out where i want the pips in with the brown pastel pencil and then going over with um, brown olive 10 percent by karen dash which is that light sort of creamy color so always paying close attention to my reference photograph um, I always find when I paint in a looser style and usually a landscape I stop looking at the reference photo and I just go off on a tangent and inevitably I really don't like the way it looks so when I work in this way methodically layer upon layer I'm paying very close attention to that reference photograph so in the lemons you can see uh, there's a variety of yellows you know I'm using more yellow ochres raw sienna uh, then more orangey yellows mixed in with vibrant yellows and then yellows that have a bit more white in them and then this this very light that I'm using here is actually a tinted it's a white that's got a slight tint of like a lemon yellow so using um, a bit of that for the lightest parts using that one has got more green in it yellows with a bit of green so it really is a mixture if i just used one type of yellow your lemon's gonna look pretty flat so it's really important to get tonal values and also like i said i also like using a variety as i mentioned goldy yellows greeny yellows ochre yellows so those pips, that, that was fun. So the middle pip is actually, I did with a Caran d'Ache pastel pencil. And it's like a mauve um, grey, actually. And I thought the colour was pretty spot on for what a lemon pip looks like. So I was very happy with that. There you can see I added a little bit more of a yellow green. I mean, a green yellow. Well, yellow green. Green yellow, you know. Um, and then, of course, getting the little texture on to the back of the lemon because that's important lemon's got your texture and then adding in the final highlight details with art spectrum extra soft highlight set and i use the lemon yellow in there and then this is a gold iridescent by sennelier actually it's not picking up very well but in the image at the back uh, that I'll put on the end of this, you can actually see the gold a little bit better. And in the background, you can see I added in some um, variation because it was just looking a little bit too black. So I added in some yellow. If you've enjoyed this, please do check me out on Patreon where I've got um, 
demos of me chatting through as I work, as well as voiceovers. Otherwise, um, I shall see you in the next one I upload here. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.